as a disclaimer, Monster Fuckers Anonymous is indeed about wanting to love and have sex with monsters, but we want to make things extremely clear from the get-go. Not all of the chosen monsters will be sapient, but we will not be endorsing zoophilia or bestiality. We will be as transparent and ethical as possible, while also sex positive and mostly having fun. Vampires that stalk in the night. Werewolves that howl to the moon. Dragons that loom over the skies. These monsters and more have plagued mortals for millennia, clouding our minds with one singular thought. Can we fuck them? Fiction or reality? Which one should we be? Don't think that I'm that naive to see. The fiction or reality of things you've done to me. Now all this stupid shit is on repeat. Hello and all, welcome back to another fantastic, stupendous, wonderful episode of MFA, aka Monsterfuckers Anonymous, the show we talk about monsters, talk about the lore, talk about media representation, and rate on a scale of 1 to 10, whether or not you, you reading at the source and being like why does cleric use the same three descriptors every single time it's because it's ingrained now and it's muzzle memory whether or not you should be having sex to those monsters i'm your colorful creature consultant cleric and with me as always is the troublesome titty sucker our technical analyst joe give me i'll give you 500 500 500 600 600 600 600 you're you're giving me the money you're giving me the money i'm giving giving it to you for free i'm gonna give you you 500 dollars to take this off our hands take this this off our hands it's illegal uh evidence against uh, federal um okay i'm losing what the fuck you became like an IRS case out of nowhere, like mm-hmm, a Rico mm-hmm. case. MFA is getting audited, and I haven't told Claire yet. Uh, 500, what? 500. Oh my God, I've been cooking the books. Cooking? Like, I've been I've been committing tax fraud actively using MFA. I see, I see. Okay. Well, Ooh. welcome to this new episode this week's... Uh, the, uh, is, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> The loss of steam gets me every single time. Like, uh. We listen. We're 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 not young anymore. We don't. We can't talk fast. We can't. We can't talk fast. We can't talk quick. We can't talk anything. But you know, what we have to get to talk to us. Robots. That's the future. Robots. Robots. Speaking of robots, Joe, what are we talking Roblox. about today? Roblox. Roblox. We're talking about Roblox. I have never played Roblox. No, actually. we're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> We today are talking about um, something that we've only slightly touched before. We are going to be talking about a specific type of Transformers, Decepticons, today. Ooh, interesting. Love. I, this is going to sound bad. I am a trans, a Michael Bay Transformers enjoyer. They're I like fun. The first, I like the first three movies. It's just They can be stupid. Fun. I don't I haven't seen the later ones, except for the one the, where TJ Miller gets fucking blown up. Oh my and that god. Guy right. does, and that Fuck guy does TJ like Miller. it's the Romeo, Romeo and Juliet laws and has it in his fucking wallet. I'm TJ I'm TJ Miller and uh why I kind of was good what, what I just did. It, you it did it for like two of, seconds and then it became just like wispy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm dying. Um yeah. it's it's just good blow uppy transformer shiny like gritty fucking hollywood lighting like yeah. it's just it's sometimes just kind of good. i want to turn off my brain and watch giant robots fight each other i'm a big kaiju fan i'm a big giant robot mecha fan yeah so exactly it, it hits all i need to hit but decepticons specifically i think are very interesting because their origin really differs on media mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so for generalized well we'll get more into it when we talk certainly about certain decepticons that we've picked uh but in some media, Decepticons are just evil war conquerors, and in mm-hmm. other medias, they're basically uh, Union revolutionaries, which I think is super interesting. So they're actually correct and fuck so, the Autobots and – yes, yeah. uh, yes and no. Right. Yeah, it so depends we, like, on the iteration. It depends on the iteration and also depends on – I'll further further begin to the history of it, but we can talk about that when we start getting into, like I said, certain Decepticons. We could talk more about the history of the Decepticons. Let's see, let's should we, should we talk about that from the jump? Um, are you? Do you know about the history of the Decepticons? I do. I was. That's why I, I did a little bit of okay, research. Okay, fantastic. So, for the Decepticons, I'm going with the IDW interpretation of the Decepticons, which I think are very interesting. So, in that one, Cybertron is a class society, like it's a caste system. 
Oh, where the halves, like the primes, are the Senate is like these rich elites, and when you're born, you're stuck in where you're at. So when it first started, Megatron and Optus Prime, I forget his, I think it's Orion is his original name, uh, were like miners, like miners and gladiators, and that's all they could ever be. And so Megatron, you know, was like, this is injustice. And so he started like this grassroots movement to be like, hey, we need to, we need equality. The world needs equality. And so Optimus Prime, originally Orion, was like, yo, I agree. Let's do this together. But this is where they differ, where due to traumas and a lot of different issues, uh, Megatron started to take things a little bit more violently. And Mm. Orion was like, no, we can achieve this through peace. The Primes ended up siding with Orion being like, you know what? You're right. We should do this peacefully. And Megatron was like, no, these people will betray us. We can't keep doing this. We need violent action in order to spark revolution. And that caused them to have a big schism. And so those who were inclined to more violent pursuits joined the Decepticons, while those who wanted to achieve true peace or like a peaceful resolution joined the Autobots. And that's what really sparked off the war. Slowly, those things, both those things kind of disappeared, where since while Megatron and a couple others kept the uh, kept the origin of the Decepticons of like, we want equality, a lot of the people, a lot of the Decepticons that joined the cause were just violent oppressors who wanted war and to conquer the universe. <laughs> and slowly, the that became the majority of the force, and that's where it slowly started corrupting. It also started corrupting Megatron, because Megatron was like, uh, any means to get the ends, and if that's what we need to really achieve true equality throughout the world, then that's what I'm going to have to do. And that's kind of where the big divide happens. Fuck. Yep. It's like, I, we truly, we rather, I will truly just learn about how deeply political the Transformers are from the get-go. I mean, it always from the beginning, mm. there's always going to be like parallels from like our real world when it comes to like a clear good and bad robots mm-hmm. kind of dynamic at all times. But it'll be interesting to see like what exactly at all times the Transformer series will be tackling because my pick, mm-hmm. uh, which cleric, I will be very happy to take it off of your hands and go, go for- first today. Yes. I know that you're very weary and it's very hard for you to start the episodes usually. I know mm-hmm. every time you you get very like you start sweating okay. and like your hands start shaking and okay. you, yes. you shrivel up and I become a know. little I become a little raisin boy, yes. You little raisin boy. A little yes, raisin exactly. boy. Put me in bran. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tayo Cruz's death risk. Um yeah. <laughs> So, uh, should I just go ahead and introduce? Yeah, take it over. Take it. This is your show now. This is you. Your spotlight's on you. I've talked about the Decepticons. I've given you a little bit of background. Share with me who you've picked. Who interests Joe? Who made your little heart swell up with pride? Little, 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 I'm not going to say what I said. Um, (laughs) I will be tugging at the heartstrings of our very own cleric underscore 34 here. And also, Mm. obviously, this is just like, it's such a me pick at the same time. I will be talking about Black Arachnia. Ooh, okay. Already interested. Black Arachnia is the techno-organic femme fatale of your nightmares. Seductive, ambitious, and inventive, she regularly toys with the tightrope of good and evil, especially when it comes to her forays in loving someone from the opposing team. Pick your poison. Either curating insectoid armies or borrowing powers from other Transformers, this Predacon always comes out on top at some point. She a baddie. Literally. Um, there is like golden plated black arachnia. There's like comic book blue and orange arachnia. And there's also a Cree Summer, I believe, voice acted black arachnia. Yes, that's the one I know. So she's from this, uh, she's one of the main ones in this animated TV show. Uh, yes. Animated fucking Transformers one that I grew up with. Uh, with like Bulkhead and Bumblebee Talks in it. And there's like... The, yes. The human thing. So in this animated version that we yeah, you were specifically talking about, um, this is one where she was actually an Autobot named Alita before, who ha- who was like literally able to borrow powers. So she gets like she 
gets quote unquote left for dead. Like people did not expect that she would actually survive from this, but she's like fighting these like spider insectoids and she attempts to like be able to fight them at their own game by like copying their powers, but then she fucking mutates from Mm. it. And then being like resentful from like being left behind and like her body had her form having changed she becomes black arachnia and that's like a very compelling very cool and fucked up origin story uh in the animated series i agree it's interesting that it happens to her it's also interesting just like you said she's more uh cunning she's more guy she has a lot more guile and compared to a lot of just the energy of the decepticons especially in that series where you have Blitzwing, who is just crazy. You have Shockwave, who is like one of the cruelest things you'll uh, Autobots you ever imagine. Just having her there is a good was a, such a great contrast. Yeah, like I can't remember. I don't. I don't. I haven't watched this series, obviously, but um, her like introduction to the series, or at the very least, like whatever, um, is her like stealing the powers of one transformer and also bumblebee and there is just like very clear tension between like her and optimus prime and like how like i guess optimus prime in this iteration the anim- in the animated iteration was kind of like the silver bolt or whatever of mm. um like the romantic interest but then like the the good and evil tides of like whatever and like the vengeance and like the resentment that was still carrying over it's just all very fucking tasty when it comes to Black Arachnia. And I love the enemies to lover or like lovers on different sides of things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so interesting to me. It's it's just enjoyable, and it always has that tension. It has that. Uh, it has the. Oh, will they, won't they? Will it get violent? Will they kiss on the battlefield? Will it just be the time the knife comes out? You know, type of energy. Yeah, and I believe in Beast Wars, like the 90s um, animation, which is fucking terrifying. It looks disgusting. style, Jesus. right? It's so scary. It is fucking a nightmare. Actually, I may be wrong about this particular sound bite, but there's one where she's like, even when I'm good, I'm bad. Like, there's, oh, there, with the very much the will they, won't they thing that you were talking about, like, mm-hmm. Black Arachnia, like, no matter what, she's like, in her core, she's still ambitious. She's still like a fucking scientist that can like refine mutations and transformations and like has a very, she's an expert in the all spark. Mm. Also, like sh- there's just, there's a, not, not, you know, n- not to say that like women are so surprisingly smart, like whatever, but like there's just <laughs> okay. such a surprisingly <laughs> profound, like, Everything that she is interested in comes from places that you really fucking understand. Like, she was like, it's like, I was left behind, or I was, um, I I have all these complicated feelings that, like, I am still somehow able to, like, rise up on top about when it comes to love. Like, Silverbolt, as far as I understand, was just kind of this, like, kind of, like, himbo, like, um, maximal Predacon, whatever. Not Predacon, but, like, a maximal. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, techno-organic, like, wolf guy. And, like, she even, at some point, like, joins the maximal sides. But, like, obviously, she is still her. Like, she is still, like, um, not devil's advocate, but, like, she's she's still prickly. She's still black arachnia. And, like, yeah. she doesn't just become less complicated just because she's technically on like another side like she still always creates certain complications certain political like edges or whatever because of just like how she was made where she comes from like wherever or however that might be like she knows how to pick her battles and like steer course and is just a fucking like smart character when it comes to her decisions but then also like love is like a very core part of her at the same time i think that's super so the way i see it if she was like in in our world type of thing uh this would be mad scientist assassin yeah it's one of those things where you'd have to be like a spy i feel like you would be rival spies or something Mm. and so you're always it's that trope of like you're always encountering that spot like mr and mrs smith type energy 
Yeah, very much so. But there's always that romantic tension there. I there's I don't know how to make that for me. I can't picture this in like a you meet them on the sh- like type energy. Like I can't see like the only way I could see it is if it was like rival bo- like rival companies. And you're constantly getting outbidded by this person because she's like sneaking in and she's getting the information, but you're trying, like you're working hard, but she's always yeah. like one step ahead of you. But she also, there's this like, there's one day where you're upset about that, where she's like, I can't believe she got a rant, like ahead of me. What the fuck am I doing? I'm like, I'm a failure. And she kind of like looks at you and she kind of is that she's like, you're actually one of the best people. Like you've, without, if you make, like competing with you makes me feel better because I yeah, tried harder. Right. And there's this like moment of sweetness there, and then it's like, uh, anyways, uh, you suck, suck a dick, bye. Yeah, but like then, I, I feel I am compelled by you, my my enemy. Yeah. Wait, I called you my enemy. I mean, yeah, you kind of are my enemy. Um, anyway, yeah, and it's like that, just like a constant romantic building tension of like mm-hmm. I w- will they mm-hmm. want until eventually mm-hmm. it's like, hey, you know what? I competing with you is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Like, I, it's made me a better person. It's made me want to try harder. And I can't imagine my life without you. Would you, like, be with me? And that's where, like, everything folds. And even though there's always going to be that competitive edge on no matter what, it's, like, but there's genuine, like, affection there. What I can... The, the thing is that I, okay. for some reason, can't get out of my head mm. is that the potential one-to-one of, like, the Autobots versus the Decepticons is the Autobots is definitely, like, giving CIA whatever like like they're definitely like some like if if there was this one-to-one where like there is like mercenaries and like black ops and whatever like Mm -hmm. the black ops still work potentially for like any given like nation or state yeah and black arachnia is this like mercenary group above it all yeah um and in no way would black arachnia be like okay i guess i'll work for the cia um but i think in a uh, in a in my, in my own fantasies where it's like a tf2 situation you know what mm, i yeah, mean yeah it's like that. like there's it, it's just like privatized mercenaries going after each other blah 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 and there's like just little kiss in the battlefield where everyone's and there's like a little fighting, kiss in the battlefield and then you like Every sneak away then. yeah i'm wearing a red t-shirt you're wearing a blue t-shirt <laughs> And to I'm speak a mad on, scientist chemist. I have big tits, you know. I'd fold. I'd fold. I mean, she's also a spider woman, which immediately just like. Exactly. Mm. Joro Gumo. Yeah. Full so, circle. So, to be honest, she has spider features. She's not a spider woman. I don't know. Like, I think the, the carapace takes a lot for me when it comes to spider woman. But I'll also say, when it comes to other things like that, she's definitely a dom for mm-hmm. sure. I think, oh no, actually, she's the dom in the street, like, sub in the street seats. I think she could go very much either way. Yeah. Like, it depends on her vibe, but I think she, no matter what, even if she's, like, maybe submissive in the moment, I think Mm -hmm. there's still, like, she's, like, this is what I want to be done. Yeah. At most of the time. But I think with, like, Silverbolt Himbo, I think... She would power bottom, but I think with Optimus Prime at all times, it was never, she was never subbing for him, even if she was bottoming. Yeah. She's the, yeah, where's that fucking TikTok audio where it's like, he's so dumb and so stupid, and I'm gonna top him? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that's from Q Force. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't quote Q Force. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I will. But yeah, no, it's that energy of just like, he is so dumb and so stupid and I'm going to top him. And that's, I think that's her, which I think valid. I think that's her. I think that's her vibe. I think she's just like this big, this big fucking hero kind of thing. I can't wait to fucking corrupt him and then like fall in love with him and get married and then go completely domestic and then maybe forget my entire life. Anyway. um, It's like, yeah, I can't wait to stab you, make you betray all your friends and then move in together and then kind of like... And then have a baby, Kiss. maybe. Yeah, and have a baby. <laughs> what? And then get a house. Nothing. What? Shut up. <laughs> and then she stabs you. And then isn't that so romantic? Honestly, I'd fold. I'd fold so fast. I'd fold. I'm, I'm, we're folding. We're, we're folding. folding. Laundry is I'm done. Folding. I'm folding. I'm folding. I'm folding. <laughs> Laundry's getting done. Bleach is, uh, bleach is put out. <laughs> Baking ironing, you a cake. ironing, ironing. Baking you cookies. Breakfast in bed. Every day. Every day. Wife. 
I swept up clean. House husband, house husband. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we have a solid grasp on who she is a little bit, plus her origin, a lot of stuff. Why don't we just dive into the scale? Absolutely. So, you know, Cleric, um, we, 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 I think we pride ourselves in attempting to not jump the gun with okay. our scores. For sure. Um, for sure. For sure. That being said, the first score set is mm. sex appeal. Ten. Ten. <laughs> I said first. I said first. <laughs> I don't think so. But whatever. Um, yeah. I like listen, I don't know anything about Transformers. I don't really know. I don't know. I didn't know anything about Black Arachnia. I knew about RC, but we decided that we were doing Decepticons. Yeah. And RC or Black Arachnia, depending on the iteration, also have like a vibe thing going on where there's like Transformer scissoring that could potentially happen. Um, yeah. There's a lot so of gay that, fucking Transformers. There's a lot of gay fucking in Transformers. There's a lot of metaphors here. And a lot of them are, no, right. there's also a lot of avert ones. I'm going to be clear. There are actual gay yes. Transformers. <laughs> yes, very much. Uh, and then there are racist Transformers in Transformers 2, by, by voice acted Galvatron. by Tom Kenny. Shout out <laughs> Voice acted by SpongeBob, if you think about it. <laughs> Um, Jesus Christ. So I I put a I I, I watched a couple lore videos about mm-hmm. Block Arachnia, and I may potentially be convinced to watch a Transformers series because of her. I would. Love she to. is sexy as fuck, Cree Summer bitch. Dog, she got an Listen, hourglass figure. She got the spider thing. She got her voices is just seductive. She lays eggs and kills her husband and eats his head. Like, oh yeah, God. absolutely. You don't have to convince me anymore. You don't have to fucking say anything. Yeah, um, but it's a ten for sure. A ten. I think it's for sure a ten. Simple for me as, as well. day. It's simple. It hits all of all, all of my boxes. And she's hitting my box. Yeah, I'm um, gonna hit her box. You know what I'm saying? Personality is next. <laughs> So here's the thing. How do we, you know, if if someone who is so evil and so rancid's personality is perfect to you, but you have to also then kind of come to like how do you grasp or come to come to some kind of conclusion about the fact that this person will mutate other people's bodies for her own scientific understanding and awareness it's a point off it's a couple points off let's be honest not a it's not a deal breaker gotta be gotta be honest not Not a deal deal breaker breaker, but gotta be honest uh i would say my argument my counterpoint to that is isn't that what scientists do isn't that what doctors do? Isn't that do? what all sci- doctors and scientists do? They, they technically just experiment mutate, on they their mutate friends. Our body. They mutate our bodies yeah. and yeah. change them in the ways that are... I didn't need glasses until I went to a fucking eye doctor. That's not true. No. I hated them. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm um, But uh, I think when it comes to her personality... She's rancid. S- she's rancid. Not rancid, but, but like, like she's... It's not great. She's evil. For sure. She is objectively evil. She's lawful she- evil. She has chosen to side. Well, actually, hold on. It depends on the iteration. I, it depends. If, I, do we want to stick with the animated one, or do we want to stick or the I don't the know. Chris Summers one, honest. or do you want to stick with the goal? Because I don't know. like, there's so many. We have to find an average. I think. Okay, so if we go by the average, she was in the original series. I was reading. She was controlled. Like she went their their fucking spaceship mm. crash landed on Earth. Somebody yeah. came in and kind of rewrote their fucking programming to be she gets Predacons. manipulated a lot right yeah, yeah. so she, originally she's not that evil there she's like just being manipulated and her love for uh silver fox or whatever the fuck his name is silver uh, bolt silver bolt changes like was able to help her come out of that c- controlling personality and become inside with them and even in the up in the autobot series she was the fucking autobot but she was what she feels like portrayed which fair alita genuinely. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so from that betrayal turned into somebody who was a little bit more manipulative, a little bit more uh, cruel, a little more vile, but there's still that sense of like, I want like of love and appreciation there. So I think you're dealing with somebody, hurt people, hurt people, you know? Hurt people, hurt people. So I will say- And sexy people who are also hurt get a little bit of a pass. Yeah, they get a pass from us. They get a pass. They uh, get a little pass. Yes. But so she's hot, and so she's sexy as fuck. So she's sexy as fuck, and honestly, so I'm going to give this an eight. Actually, no, seven point five. Let me lower it down seven point five. F- because while 
there is a semblance of there's somebody who's caring. There's somebody who is like able to change and be a better person. If you're getting her off rip, like just like when she's first there, this is somebody cruel who will manipulate you and then leave you to die. I'm I'm going to do an 8.5. Fair. Thank you. Absolutely fair. Okay. The next score is relationship potential. So, hey, she's had, she has a lot of relationships. She sacrifices a lot of her own, like, factions, like her faction loyalty for relationships. Like, she wants... Yeah. I don't know if she wants romance, but it's, it's just something that, like, happens, and she, at some point, embraces... She's like, I'm not going to kid myself. I'm in love with you. So I'd yeah. love to do something about that. I would say she's also, like, in the original series, when she does defect and she goes with Silverbolt and they live with our happy life out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say relationship potential for this one is extremely high. I would give this a nine. I think I'm going to say that too. She's just shown so much for an evil fucking lady. So much surprising a surprising amount of just like willing sacrifice and like getting her shit together for mm. the love of her fucking life. Like she is just a beautiful fucking lady. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. She's IDK. I okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know. It's just interesting. And I think that because she can officially, she actually shows that potential that a lot of other places we have to assume we actually can physically mm-hmm. see that she loves somebody. I think that's what really boosts it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And counter chance. I don't actually know. Like, in what world are we like interacting with these huge transformers and like understand what's going on? You know, usually very much so. The robots are very obvious. Uh, sometimes they do. The Autobots like to hide. The Decepticons not really. And but they're also the Decepticons get hunted by the fucking U.S. government. So they're usually around. They do interact with humans. To, like, either manipulate mm-hmm. them, to get them to do something, to force them to things. They are a lot of active interactions with humanity. And because a lot of them trash land on Earth, because Earth Cybertron is destroyed or just messy and all that kind of stuff. So I would argue the Encounter Chance is actually fairly high because they're all over. Sometimes they're in rural – they're not just okay. in cities. They're in, like, rural subur- – like, suburbia hiding uh, they sometimes like are outside they of areas. Are, they transform. They are fucking cars. Or there was one in the like fucking Smithsonian. Whatever. So yeah, I, I think it. Chan- the Chan- thing Chan- is, okay, she is a techno. She's a spider. That's where this differs. It's if this was any other transformer, I'd say it's high. Right. She's a giant spider. So any tra- <laughs> yeah, any transformer, I would usually give the encounter chance of being like, oh, okay, I say an eight or a nine. For her, I think I have to lower it down to a six. There's a very real chance you could encounter her, but encountering a giant spider is rare. It's very rare. I actually give this a 6.5 because she does actively go out and talk to people. She's not just like hiding away. She doesn't like choose to hide. Yeah. Yeah. I think I this isn't a very informed answer or decision, but I, in my heart, I want to say six. Fair. I'm not going to tell you no there. I think a six is pretty solid there. And he, death. Okay. So the next score is going to be death risk, which is going to be very interesting for this episode because these are Decepticons. So the death risk is high. She the is. The desk risk, desk, death desk, risk desk, for sure. Desk, death, desk, desk, death, death, dick. She has actually murdered a lot of Decepticons have murdered people actively. Murdered. They do kill murdered. people. They do Killed. kill other Decepticons. They do just Oh yeah. There is a murder aspect of all of this. And unless you're like she really loves you, the odds of, you know, her not being the one to fucking murder you, semi low. So I am going to give this a four. And like I guess here's the thing. She's not experimenting on like humans or anything like that like they have to be techno organic like at some point she goes like kind of mad and like even though she like found a bunch of insectoids on earth at some point she goes like nuts and like eats them Mm. to like take their energy or whatever but like that being said that doesn't mean that she's like she's like very able to kill humans but that doesn't mean that her interest is in doing that nor yeah. that does she get any sustenance sustenance out of it. So it's like you really gotta like piss her off at that point. 
but she does obviously kidnap um, a child in the animated series. I'm not seeing the problems here. I is um I don't I I'll give it a five because I it, I think your involvement really matters here. If you're just like hello, pretty spider robot woman, I would like you, to take you pretty, out I'd for like gas. You for date. I'd like to date for you. Put oil in your some hole. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um, put in hole, please. I appreciate. Bye bye. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, uh, but yeah, that's our rancid, uh, <laughs> our rancid score number. roundup. So we have the numbers. All right. Let's look at some spiders and pause for a minute. Let's pause for a minute. Let's go. Let's take, let's take a break. Let's take a little second. Take a little second. Take a little second. <laughs> My friends call me Black Arachnia. Read the scores, yo. Okay. We are... Um, Breaking out of our cocoons, that's not spider stuff. We're breaking out of our webs at this moment. Um, and for Cleric, for Black Arachnia, we got a, a whopping 7.4 for me, a 7.7, which gives Black Arachnia a 7.6, which is 0.5 points above Dragon from Shrek. Let's go. Also Lens above Grand Mam Grand Mamare, Jinbei, Furfur, and Garrus. Black Arachnia is doing very well for yeah, herself. She's gone up there. She's one of the top tiers. So that's good to hear. I'm glad. I love her. But there is one that I do love a little bit more than her. How I, dare you? He was first of all, shut up. Second of all, <laughs> uh, he was voted. Not once, but twice winner of the Robot Husband Awards. Oh, he okay. Is, I believe he's such a slick and iconic design. He looks cool, even though he may look blocky and weird to other people. You just don't know him. I know him. I think he looks you amazing. You just don't know him. Like I you know just him. don't know him. I know him. And that is my favorite Decepticon, simply Soundwave. During a time of crisis for Cybertron, where Transformers like Megatron were fighting for equality and sparking revolution, one Transformer answered the call. He would become one of the most loyal to Megatron in the cause of the Decepticons, becoming one of the most feared and respected. With three cassette animals by his side, no one could stand up against him. Not the mad Blitzwing, not the treacherous Starscream, not even the brutal Shockwave. All would come to know Soundwave. I love him. He's so blocky, but also so cool at the same time. Let me pick, let me pull some photos. Yeah, Let's I'm see pulling what he fucking here's, looks like. Here's him, this little, this, here's him doing a little dance. Look at this little guy. What the what fuck? This guy. He's also a brutal murderer. Oh, okay. Uh, I see that he was in the Michael Bay movies. He was. He was in the third one. He was in the second one for a brief cameo, but he was in the third one, not looking like this, which made him suck. But he is just cool. Here's a better picture of him. He is thick, though. He's a thick 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 boy. He's a thick boy. So, depending on your iteration, I'm going with the IDW origin of him because I like that more and I like the stories involved in the IDW one with Soundwave a bit more. So, in this, so Soundwave has limited telekinetic powers or not uh, telepathic powers. Like if he touches somebody, he can read their minds. So, with the power, he was kind of ostracized in Cybertron. And then he was kind of left alone. So these three cassettrons, like they're very small animal, like that can kind of transform, but they're not really full people, uh, found Soundwave and they're like, hey, we can help you control your powers, blah, blah, blah. We want you to help with you. And he bonded with them so much that he like was like, hey, I know you guys are roaming around and you have no place to live. Live in me. Be- I will become like your body. Oh, my God. And so now he lives like all those three are like his best friends and they live inside of him. Like they live. They are part of him. So he was he was also a gladiator, and so he meets Megatron, and Megatron's like, "Hey, I'm fighting for a cause for equality." He's like, "No, you're not, pussy." He's like, "Well, you can read my mind, can't you? See, see how serious I am about this shit." And so he does, and he sees how uh, he truly wants equality. And from then on, Soundwave is Megatron's most loyal person. 
but not because he's loyal to Megatron. It's that he's loyal to what the Decepticons are supposed to be. So depending on the iteration, there's like they're super loyal to either Megatron and follow him without cause, like without any purpose. But from for Soundwave, he's always been the my greatest goal. The thing that I'll go for is equality. And I think that Megatron is the best way to get that. So that is his big thing. And so that's why when other Decepticons are like, hey, we're going to sacrifice some of our other Decepticons. Like Starscream is like, I'm going to sacrifice a bunch of Decepticons so we can get our goal. He's like, why the fuck would you do that? We're fighting for equality. That's weird. And then he like Starscream convinces him. He's like, I don't like that, but okay, I guess you're right. If this is the best way for us to get like equality, blah, blah, blah. And so he fights, he does, like, he's their communication officer, so he, like, spies on everybody, he gets the information, he's a very brutal fighter, he's one of the toughest ones. Oh uh, my god. So, he's very- Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you, are you looking at Soundwave pictures? <laughs> no, I, just, like, the way that I said that was just so, like, okay, oh I need to chill out. So, Soundwave is kind of just that. So, that's basically who he is. He is the most loyal to the cause. And so- the Little that, bitch boy. He, little bitch. First of all, watch your tone. Watch out, okay. fucker. And he's not he's not a bitch boy. He's tough. He's out there. He's one of the most cunning. But also, he is, like I said, he's low to the cause. And what that turns into is, in the IDW comics, Megatron defects to the Autobots. He realizes the error of his ways. And he's like, mm. I should be less of a, like, I should be, like, I'm going to join the Autobots. And this hurts uh, Soundwave because he's like, I thought the cause was, vi- like, revolution through violent uprise or like like we're the only way for the for us to create equality is through violence but i also believe in equality so why the fuck would you betray the decepticons because that's what we we're supposed to be about and so he like kind of follows another person who's a little bit more uh galvatron who's a little bit more violent but even then so he's he ends up creating a place called sanctuary where mm. not only for decepticons to hang out and be like peaceful and as well he starts accepting other autobots he's like listen i want peace you just got to follow decepticon rule but autobots can stay here and like for sanctuary and for things like that and he he gets to a point where the decepticons are so violent and so antithetical uh, uh, i don't know what it's called antithetical whatever antithetical yeah antithetical to what it was supposed to be that he kind of defects to the Autobots, but he never takes off his Decepticon signal or like his little emblem. So he, in turn, honestly, is the last true Decepticon. And Mm. so he ends up becoming more and more involved with the Autobots and peace and all that kind of shit. He like ends up like walking with elephants. He falls in love with with, like elephants. He's like, elephants are the greatest creature to ever exist. And like kills poetry. Like he's like walks, takes walks with them. So in the comics, his final act is when there's like this giant, uh, it's Omnicron, the greatest threat to all of life, shows up. Soundwave sacrifices himself by amplifying all the voices that have been killed by Omnicron and the Decepticons and amplifies their voices and like their spark to give to Optimus Prime. And in like his little final words in like the most, because he has a monotone voice, he doesn't like have any inflection. Uh, it is just Operation Absolution, and just he dies after pa- oh my Optus, God. Optus Prime is like power up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in his honor, one of his friends kills uh, elephant poachers. Soundwave's a good guy, huh? Yeah, Soundwave is in all versus in this iteration a good guy, and that's the iteration just I want. Kind of a stand up. Yeah. What do you What are your thoughts? What do you What do you think? And I know I just went on a little bit of a tangent here. I mean, like. I like it, it, like what a classic kind of story of like starting from like sort of villainhood and then s- sort of finding the like glorious like gray here that like not all villains are like single issue people like you can really find like quote unquote like evil or like bad or illegal like things from like what we understand as like humans you know whatever And just finding what, like, alien robots are, like, become obsessed with, 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 like, a new proximity to, like, just humanity is just very cute to me. Like, that's just, that's what a, what a, like, what a special interest for him to, like, develop. That's very sweet. Yeah. Where it's just that. I like his other forms as well, because in one he has a keytar. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And in another he has a How did you learn about that? That's I, uh, so, Soundwave loves Elton John, I guess. 
Well, in that version, that's that, so the one with the keytar is actually the version with uh, Arachni or Black Arachni. Uh, in that version, Black Arachnia? Yeah. So he in that version, he's not a transformer. He was um, a robot that a scientist built that Megatron influenced and gave the all spark. And then he was like, humanity oh. sucks. Robots should never serve humanity. Like a, like a Five Nights at Freddy's like animatronic? Basically, yeah. And so, so then funny. he was just like, oh, robots should control blah, blah, blah. This guy is a revolutionary. And to be very honest, he is better than the I don't see a downside. Because you'd be like, he's violent. Okay, revolutions are violent. <laughs> Fuck you want from me. He's a union guy. He is down to earth. Sure, he may kill a couple people, but that he may kill some of like other transformers and robots. But dog, the right who like? What am I going to be? Union? I'm going to go with the union buster. I'm going with the guy who's a part of the union. You know, the guy that looks like a Five Nights at Freddy's animatronic. Yes, and he has pets. Thick. He's an animal. and he has pets. So he loves. And he so, he so, loves animal rights. Yeah, in in the positive category, loves animals, pro union. Uh, has great taste in music. I'm not really seeing any downsides besides maybe a monotone voice. He can sometimes knows exactly what you're thinking and he can use that against you. Uh, hears everything so you can't have any secrets. That's very tough. That's tough. So, you know, so you know. He, the, the pros and cons to everything. Uh, he, <laughs> he also, I would say, if he was like, the sound wave gives off the energy of like, I try to be like, first of all, definitely into sounding. Ha <laughs> no. Uh, oh my God. But he gives off the energy of a guy who wants to be on top, but at like gives up halfway through. And it's kind of just like, you know, how about you take over? That or no, he's the guy who listens to you every, like listens to your every word. He's the guy who like, you like rub my feet. He's like, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So I think he's, he's a, I think he's an all purpose, like service sub. I think yeah, that 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 vibe very much I adore. And Any, mm-hmm. like anyway, love that trope. Like love yeah. this sort of thing of like this this person, this guy constantly just like has things that he believes in, including puss. Yeah, I think he'll but he's also the type to be like, hey, I like I want you to be good, so I set you up like a payment plan for your credit card. And you're like, I didn't want that. <laughs> like, but it's like I, you, I put everything together for you. Yeah, you um, just have to do it. <laughs> like, and I like listen. I in in this relationship dynamic, there are you never. I never have to just assume anything because I know what you're thinking at all times, mm-hmm. and I know I'm trying to like. We're, there's the that is something that we have to kind of like work with each other about. Cause I know it's not entirely comfortable to, for me to be like entirely in your head, but it's not something yeah. that I can help. Yeah. So if there's anything that I can just kind of, even if it is burdensome to share, I can take things on for you because I am also a robot with like the entire wealth of like the internet and understanding of most electronic beings. And God, he's great. You're not seeing any downsides. There's no downsides to Soundwave. No downsides. Uh, I mean, the partner that can that knows everything that you're thinking is definitely a downside for me. But I just have issues. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess it would be annoying. I want to have conversation. I want you just to you see know, everything and you know. then just be like, oh, okay, cool. But as somebody who has trouble, who's has trouble communicating sometimes, how I'm really feeling, I think it's helpful. To hear, to have somebody who's just like, hey, I can sense how you are. I can sense you're upset. I can sense you're feeling this kind of way. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a solid segue Mm. into beginning to score him. Yeah, let's do it. Sex appeal. Ten. Nine. So, for me, it's a ten because I love masks, everyone. I love giant armor. There's two things. There's a couple things I love. I love giant armor. Masks and armor are fantastic. I love all that type of shit. And I like just big beef like strong so he's checking off all the boxes for me plus he's got a cassette player you know always music always has a sex playlist ready to go so i oh think it's gosh. a 10 out of 10 where it could actually i'm gonna lower it to a nine actually i will lower it to a nine wait what the fuck what? no here's the reason here's the reason no there's a very legitimate reason okay his pets live inside him oh that's right he has so, like buddies yeah so at him. any moment you have to be like yo can you kick your pets out he's like no nah, they kind of live here it's like we're, it's like I can send he's like I can send them out, but that's kind of re- it's kind of rude. I'm just like fuck. I mean, how about kick your roommates out? You know. So that's where I say, Oof. bad bad vibes there. So that's why I'll, I'll lower it to a nine. Okay, personality. 
I mean, like, it's a golden standard here. Like, it's... It's golden. It's for me. This is the perfect one. This is amazing. I think this is a nine. This is a nine for me as well. I'll double it up there. Nine is phenomenal. He's a, like I said, union man. <laughs> union man who supports it. Fuck out of here. Uh, Get out of here. Relationship potential. I'm going to have to put this lower. Really? So, uh, okay. Yeah, for sure. He, he doesn't really enter any relationships as long uh, from my knowledge. He... he has more causes, more room, emotional, mental room for causes than relationships, I think. Yeah. He's also very much um he likes his uh robot like he's like he has good friendships. He has people he supports like Rumble and all of those guys, like his mm-hmm. uh his actual thing. So he does make friendships, he does stuff like that. The and he has that loyalty. I just he hasn't, from my knowledge, been like, let's kiss. Mwah. Let's kiss. Let's kiss. Or like, let's stop and smell the roses. Like, let's get vulnerable. Yeah. Like, I think he's very much the like, enjoys the company, but like, doesn't realize that maybe a label might be warranted at some point situation. Yeah. Mm, got it. Feels like uh, it's still strong. It feels maybe like a 7.5. I, I'm going to give this a six. Wow. Because I, I don't. I mean, he does talk. He did have a friendship with a human once, like a real close friendship over the GI Joe named huge. mainframe. So, I, you know, I'll, I'll I'll go with seven. Fuck it, I'll go with seven. Okay. And counter chance. So you're gonna have to tell me about this. Yes, and I would say middling because he he's the one who infiltrates humans the most. Like he goes in and like takes so over huge. compounds. He takes like he listens to people. He can become a giant. Can he can become a stereo. So people okay. can take him anywhere. Like he goes in cars with stereos okay. and everything. Uh, he is like, you can find him. He actually does all that stuff. So I, think I don't know if this is middling then. I think it's like, this sounds like, that sounds like it's an eight at least. You know what? You're right. Eight. Believe in yourself, cleric. You can do it. I'm trying. You have a good robot. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Get your shit together. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, death risk high high well, okay high. okay well no i mean in the sense of he will kill you he will for sure murder you he's done but if he believes for in list. you if he likes you if you end up getting if he ends up being at that the rare, loyalty the loyalty thing he will i don't think he will but that's like if you're just a random person who comes to him he's like i can't use you dead shield you're gone cassette <laughs> murder him Query. Okay, well, you're dead. You, you, know, you know, yeah. Okay. Um, what's the death risk compared to Black Arachnia? I would however? say low. I would give this a four. Okie dokie. Um, I feel like if Black Arachnia is a five for me, I th- I believe Soundwave might have to be a six for me. Mm. Okay. We have the numbers. We have the waves. Okay, we have the wave. Why don't we blast our music and think out what we're trying to find? Soundwave acknowledges. Soundwave. Actually, play a key- Kes, know. play a guitar right here. But Kes, you have to do it. Yeah, you have to Kes, get a guitar. I want to hear you get into your car or get on the train. I want you to go. And I want to hear the sound of a door opening. I get to, to the you, trolley. I want, to some... I want you to... I hear the ka sound of a register. I want you to pick up a guitar. I want to hear the train coming back. And then I want to hear the guitar sound. I want to hear phone audio of you uh, recording someone non-consensually while saying, yeah, can I get this guitar? Can I get a guitar? Okay. <laughs> anyway, we have the scores. Um, four, Soundwave, the Decepticon, Cleric, with a 7.4. Nice. For m- me. Uh, a seven point nine. You seven point four is all around for this. This that for the Decepticons so far. The Decepticons are just so much better. I guess they're just so much um, better and hotter. Soundwave gets a seven point seven between the two of us. That's just point Let's one go. above Black Arachnia. Hey, so hey. listen, seven hey. point whatever is are are really good scores. So yeah, those are high scores for MFA. So Decepticons. This next producer pick is actually an artist pick. 
in all technicality. Yes. Uh, because Ruby has been getting really, really into the Transformers series. Or Ruby's I don't know which autism is hitting one. right now. Hitting, brother. Um, so this is actually Ruby's pick uh, that Kess dressed up for the producer pick. Um, and Cleric, why don't we go ahead and open this bitch up? Yeah. Let's open up in three, two, one. Okay. The headline here is, there has to be a reason why Megatron keeps him around when he not so subtly keeps talking about overthrowing him. Oh, I know exactly who this is. We talked about this last night. Beginning parentheses, exactly. toxic yaoi, close parentheses. I know parentheses. exactly who the fuck this is. By right. Ribby. Scroll down. Three, two, one. Yep, there he is. It's Starscream. The cowardly bastard of the Decepticons. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. This scheming, sniveling underling to Megatron makes his ambition for power clear at every turn. Until someone more powerful than him so much as looks in his direction. Starscream is a visionary, tired of the old ways of his Decepticon betters, and eager to seize power at every opportunity. The only thing holding him back is his cowardly nature. This pathetic robot may be more familiar with the underside of his boss's boot than the feeling of mutual respect. But perhaps that's just how this heaping hunk of metal likes it. Hot, heavy, and heavily one-sided. This man is pathetic. This man is... I, for, for context, uh, last night I was in a call with Ribby and a couple other people, and we were chatting about uh, the Transformers we were picking, and I was like, oh, Starscream seems too obvious. And Ribby, while in the middle of a cold, dying, literally typing out, I can't speak, got on the mic and said, he's my favorite boy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Iggy's toxic, yowie. Uh, and then just like stopped talking for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about correct. Yeah. So I this is as soon as I saw Ribby was making the choice, I was like, yeah, it's probably the Star Scream. Which is fair. I did want to talk about him kind of because he's so pathetic. He sucks so much. So well, how much do you know about Starscream, uh, Joe? Like, like not even like what I I, I understand like the vibe. I, I'm like aware, but like mm. I don't know like really much else about like motivations or like I didn't know that he was cowardly. He, you know, well, he is cowardly in the sense of he will do whatever he want he has to in order to stay in power. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if Megatron is this big influential figure, he is like Iago or like the scheming guy in the background right. of all times. Uh, he's a little he's, parrot fucking pupper fucking yeah. fucking. One Megatron's around, he's like, yes, Lord Megatron, whatever you need, Lord Megatron. Yes, daddy. But in the back, yeah, yes. But in the background, he's always scheming for power. He's always like talking to somebody to be like, what if Lord Megatron wants us to get the Allspark? But if we got the Allspark before him, we could be in charge. As soon as something comes up for to be in charge, he will do it. The problem being, he is, while he's cruel, he is very, indeed, very cruel and very cunning. Uh, he will murder his other, like uh, I said before in the Soundwave bit, he was willing to sacrifice a bunch of Decepticons in order to get what he wants. Oh my god! <laughs> he was also. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, he was also in another comic. He brutally murders humans without a second thought. Like he is like stomping on humans, murdering them, no problem. He is – the problem being he only does that when he knows he has the upper hand. As soon as everything going his, like, everything's going his way, he suddenly has the most confidence in the world. You hit him one time and suddenly that man is sobbing on his ground, pissing himself, being like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me go. Please. And then you're like, damn, you're pathetic. And you turn around and then there's a knife in your back and you turn around and be like, what the fuck? And he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm just a little guy. <laughs> uh, according to Ribby, he's also the shortest Decepticon. He is small. Oh my small, god! Uh, but he's a whole plane. He's a. I mean, but everyone else is like tanks and giant fucking freighter. Yeah, engines. you're fucking right. That's so true. <laughs> and he's just. He like would a be a bird. Plane. He would be a bird. He would straight up. Yeah, I think he that's... is in um when they're in the in the Maximals shit. He is. I think. A oh, bird interesting. In that situation. Interesting. But, that makes so much sense. So yeah, he's like a pathetic. He's always like that. Actually, he what he did was Soundwave when he made Sanctuary, which I think is funny. 
uh, he was eventually outed as the leader because they found out that he had actively like committed a murder of one other Decepticon. But it was in, it was like after all the war stuff, uh, he was murdered, and so everyone's like, "How can we trust you? You talk about like peace and like equality, but you killed somebody." And so Saturn's like, "I'll step down. Like logically, I still want to be a part of this. I'll step down." And they're like, "Fair." And immediately, Starscream's like, "I'm in charge now." Jesus Christ! I'm in charge. Come on! And everyone, because he's so charismatic, like we all get to like where we were. Like none of this pathetic hiding. Everyone's like, "You know what? Maybe he's got points." But Starscream just wants to be in charge, and he wants like just the power to be like, "All right, I'll conquer the universe." But as soon as, again, someone bigger or badder comes around, he is ass up first. Oh my goodness. Which is why, according to Ribby, he's in the toxic Yowie with Megatron, where Megatron's like, you're a pathetic. He, Megatron keeps him in his place, so his arrogance doesn't get out of control. Uh, we are also going to be getting some live pictures of Starscream, apparently, that Ruby has personally saved. So we'll be reacting to some of those as we uh, Yeah, Ruby also to... sent, like, two videos from YouTube of, like, uh, yeah, Megatron apparently. yelling at... Well, first of all, of Starscream's portrayal... Let me, let me, uh, <laughs> let me l- hear this guy's voice. Oh, it's bad. It's fucking bad. <laughs> you are either lying or you're stupid! I'm stupid! I'm stupid! Oh my god, Ruby. I'm stupid. I'm, I'm stupid. stupid. Uh, okay. And the first one is Megatron just getting shot, like, just like a flesh wound, and immediately starts to be like, Megatron is dead. I'm your leader now. And flying off. So, like, literally, the first opportunity, Starscreen will uh, betray everybody. So, he's basically, if you're trying to think about him as something, he's like, again, there's this big boss of like let's say a crime boss or whatever that lives in your neighborhood and uh-huh. he's like roll like everyone is scared of him but also knows like if like he will protect you at a certain like at a certain point but don't ever double cross him but there's this guy he keeps around with him like if you notice on his right like his left hand not his right hand his left hand uh, oh. uh there's like this fucking super thin super strong like hunchback kind of dude who's always with him who's like that yeah boss yeah and then as soon as he turns around he's just like selling like doing b- undermining the business at every single turn mm-hmm. and you don't understand mm-hmm. why the boss keeps around but then one day you kind of like walk into them and you see them like fucking where the boss is yeah, straight fingering. up pounding this man's asshole Absolutely. And it's because this guy's not only short, has the most disgusting voice you've ever fucking heard, but the tightest pussy. <laughs> he's got the tightest pussy. He keeps that shit on lock. And that's why he stay, and that's why he stays around. It's not because he's smart or cunning or a good leader. It's that his pussy be tight, so I can deal with a little being betrayed. And who he hasn't had that? He crosses his fucking legs. That's a gay man. How does how does he even know how to to cross his legs. What do you how mean? How does he know how to smirk like this? That's Starscreen. He, there's a reason he's I a know. charismatic. He's, he's charismatic. He gets people on his side. So he crosses his stupid little gay little fucking legs and knees? Yes. He's I, Okay, I, I, I won't call him pathetic. Let me rework the image for you because I think I've, I've tainted him a little bit. This is next to the boss is a, a, while the boss is like built, muscular, intimidating. There's this guy who's like super skinny but super like super short super skinny but is incredibly beautiful okay okay but okay. You've always, he's like the type that goes to a bar and he's like i actually i'm the right hand man for the De- the septicon guild or the septicon boss or mafia and i like if i can get you into there don't you know who i am like i i can t- smooth talk into anywhere and then as soon as the boss or somebody tougher comes up next to him he's like what the fuck are you doing he's like no nothing my bad sorry 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 my bad sorry but then he also is undermining the boss I return. So there's a bunch of people who still follow him actively. Like he is, for all except person, one of the boss's lieutenants. So even though he's betrayed him multiple times, he's like, I can't get rid of him because so many people love him. And he is useful. It's because he's, he's so fucking beautiful. He's so beautiful. He's so charismatic. He's such a smooth talker that he can help in negotiations. So I have to keep him around. But I know this man will betray me at the fucking first opportunity. He'll sell mm, me out. That's fucking, that's so delicious. That's fucking tasty as shit. And then they're fucking each other the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. I get it, Ribby. Sad, but I get it. <laughs> Is that what we get? Do you want to do it to the scale? Yeah. Have I, I, have I painted so. enough of a picture for you for this guy? Absolutely. We, okay. Sex appeal. 
now that you see him in this form and you kind of hear his voice, his voice is always that like scraggly voice. It's never one in... that – it's not like smooth. It's usually like a – like – Megatron. I'm Love stupid. You. I'm stupid. stupid. Like Columbo. Yeah, like Megatron. Mega- Lord Megatron. I'm sorry, Lord Megatron. Megatron. Like that kind of thing. If if Starscream just shut the fuck up, it, this, it would be such a higher score. But the sex appeal is not. This is a, maybe like a, this is like a 7.5 for me. I'll, I'm going to go with a 7. Just a straight 7. I think in these, okay. the comics make him look hotter than he is the comics make him look hot as fuck but you can't hear his voice in comics yeah he doesn't i don't think he's ever had like a smooth voice it's always been like that nasally gravelly voice even in like the fucking movies he has that grab i hate how he looks in the movies in, in the in, in the most cursed way i think he would have the gayest close to valiest maybe kind of voice in like a like a modern like like a, the most like I if okay, if it actually, were to be an abridged like maybe like transformer or whatever of like the comic I could see the worst gay man voice. The thing is, happening. you've now collected something. This is a mean gay, the worst mean gay the, you've yes. ever met. Yes, where it's like yes, oh kind of thing. This is a oh this is a mean gay. This is a what mean if the gay. deep was a mean gay and <laughs> Megatron was Homelander? You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's. That no, that's exactly is, it. That's exactly it. This is exactly if the deep Holy was shit. actually hot and a mean gay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the dynamic. This is what this is. For context, we've Disgusting. been getting into the boys recently. We've been. I've been watching a lot. I'm where I'm caught up. I've yeah. watched Gen V. Yeah, it's yeah, we it's been getting into the boys. A problem. Uh, but yeah, no, it's the deep. This is yeah, basically the deep. If he was uh, mean gay with Homelander, personality. This man sucks. This guy fucking sucks. This guy this fucking is like, sucks. It, it's it's like not even that he's like like cunningly evil and like whatever. He's annoying. He just is like an, he's weird. He's annoying. He's just which is an awful quality. I I don't like him. I don't. I, I don't like him. There's not much I can do to like him. So I'm gonna give this a two. Like a two. I think I like I like how he's cunning. But I don't like anything else about him. Yeah, you, you. That's the same score you gave for the Predator's personality. So I feel like a, about that makes a lot of sense. I think too is where I will land as well. Okay. So then, relationship potential. Don't even fucking. I think he could maintain. No. He can't even maintain this current one. He's constantly trying to like undermine yeah. Megatron. But to be, I guess to be fair, Megatron for some reason keeps him around. Like he hasn't. I think he's definitely punished Starscream a lot, right? Mm-hmm. He. But is... like, I think that's just also Megatron's own like power dynamic thing kind of going on at the same time. Like, I can always make an example of Starscream in front of like the new guys. Yeah. I I think again, like I said, he is the type to. This is a toxic Yao shit that only works for them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I I relationship potential. There's there's none. Um, I, there's none that I can even imagine. <laughs> there's none. There's, there's yeah. fucking none I can imagine. I, I actively I'll give this a point five. Okay, I'm giving I'm gonna give this a one, but yeah, I'm here on that encounter chance. He's a plane. <laughs> Well, he's also one of the most active in the whole. He's like Megatron Makes sends sense. him out for fucking anything and everything. So, Get me a Snapple. Yeah, basically, he's he is Megatron's Get fucking. Get me some Aaron Subway boy. and a Snapple. Just, yes, Lord Megatron. By the way, what what flavor of what flavor would you like, Lord Megatron? Sweet sweet onion. <laughs> I don't know what Megatron would like. What's the most evil Subway flavor? Evil Subway flavor. What do you mean? The vegetarian sub. I think the like weird block. I would, of like tofu. I would say getting a pizza at Subway is the worst thing you can do. Honestly, yeah. There we go. There we go. Also, eating at Subway. Well, I, I can't say that. I, I order from Subway sometimes. I love Subway. I do. It's one of those things where sometimes I just want like it's a sandwich. It's the saltiest bread and really like everything is. is so salty. And sometimes if you're high, that's what you fucking need. Yeah. I like, I need to get more garlic aioli. 
Because they mm. put that shit, the way they make their garlic aioli, I don't know what it is. It just hits they for me. They shove it up my ass. Yeah, in some it's way. fucking delicious. And it's just like, I sometimes I want a fucking foot long that I can't get at. And just like, shove it up my ass. What are we doing? What are we doing? I don't know. <laughs> I doing? want some Subway. Um, uh, encounter Chance. I, I mean, if you're saying he's basically like a little evil gay scout situation. Yeah, he is. Um, I would, I'll rank I this guess, high. I would, I would give this an eight or a nine. You have the great odds of encountering. Uh, I'll do an eight point okay, five. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I'll. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go an eight because that's wild. But yeah. Okay. 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 Death risk. What's the fatality? The lethality? On Super this high. Guy? There's a comic that was made oh. recently where motherfucker. Starscream was on like demon time, murdering fucking everyone. Humans, he was like ripping humans apart with fucking. I guess he's a plane. No regard for anything. He kills yeah. Autobot, uh, Autobots and Decepticons for his own personal gain. He this has, is this is the first Decepticon that kill that we are like talking about. That's killing humans actively. Yes. Okay. He is violent. He is. He will do whatever he can to win. So, honest to God, I mean, okay, this is, a, this is a one. He will do it. This There's no one. chance he does it. murder you unless you, like, promise. Unless you bow. There he is. There he is. He came to my house. <laughs> uh, unless you bow down to him. There's no way you do it. So. Uh, I mean, okay. I think we've got the scores. We and got he's it. at your house, so you're about to die. Oh, yeah. He has a gun. He has his giant blaster in my head. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Say okay. the score. Say the score. Say the score. Megatron has fallen! I, Starscream, am now your leader! Decepticons, follow me! We've held Starscream off for just a little bit longer. We've we said that Subway is like right down the block. He can go enjoy some Subway. Yeah. The evil vegetarian fucking blog, whatever the fuck it is, pizza. Yeah, we direct him over there. Megatron really wants it. Cleric. Yes. For Starscream. Mm-hmm. You have a 3.8 for me, a mm. 3.9, which gives rounds up essentially Starscream with a 3.9, Ooh. which obviously we'll get into like the loser scale. Yeah. Um, definitely not very good for this episode, but Starscream has a higher score than Satan. And the Predator <laughs> and Smaug. I so if you think so about it, funny. Transformers is really not. We'll have to revisit, obviously, for the Autobots. Yeah, but interest, very interesting stuff. I, very interesting stuff. I'm actually super excited about that. I think Transformers, like that's of collectively because if we're doing it by segments of what, mod, like, sure, individually things scored differently, but if we're doing this by segments, to be honest, Transform the Decepticons would average out all three scores if we average everything out for the ones would probably rank the top five maybe like maybe. just decepticons in general so they're sexy they're evil we love that yeah i'm with it so joe why don't we do a recap before we head off out of here okay losers or winners first let's do losers first losers first with a 3.9 star scream the r- left hand scout Toxic Little Yowie. bitch boy. Toxic, toxic Yowie. The most, the toxicest of Yowie. Um, Starscream as our loser for today's episode. Oh, Ribby. Ribby's producer crying. pick. Ribby, sorry. Ribby's you sobbing suck. right now. You got bad taste and you should die. And guess what? Um, I'm moving up your deadlines. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Our mid for this episode is unfortunately my choice. It's basically the same. It's weird. I would say, just, honestly, there's no mid this episode. To be very honest. I think so too. I, would, I think so too. I'm down. Listen, I'm down to do this if you are. I'm down to raise Black Riding Sword to be the same as Soundwave and just do a two way and just put them on the same level. There is no I loser. Think, I mean, the, the scores are different, but I, it's basically a two-way. Yeah. Black Arachnia with a 7.6 and Soundwave with a 7.7 today as yeah. our winners. There were winners because there's no – this is the. I think this is honestly the first time we've had two choices that are genuinely very good and very equal. She, just – Mamma Mia. And maybe Cleric is only saying that because Black Arachnia is indeed a spider woman. That may be true. And in any and in any other case, no slack will be given to me For of sure. any sort. Uh, I am yeah. a hypocrite. Hypocrisy is very real and running through my bloods. So mm-hmm. this is the exception, not the rule. 
Uh, but, you know, they're both very interesting characters, both very people who have moral grays and are actually very complex. Compelling and interesting. Yeah, yeah, complex. Who have love, who have appreciation, who are not built, are not driven by uh, just blind murder, but driven by desire and goals. So I think, and causes, and I think that's super interesting. And so I'm excited for, you know what, Joe, do you want to talk, how about next episode, do you want to talk about Autobots? Let's talk Autobots. Why not? Let's do it. Why not? So we have the inspiration. Yeah, I'm on the, we're on the train. Let's might as well just ran, round it out. So with that, it's going to conclude our episode. Next time we'll be talking, giving the Autobots a fair shake, seeing how they're going to go. Uh, Joe, do you have any closing thoughts? Transformers. Robots. Robots in, in disguise. disguise. In five guys. They're in five guys? Yeah, Shia LaBeouf and Michael Bay and... Um, Shout out to the gay ones. All right. Bye. Tom Kenny as the racist robots. Bye. Your hosts have been Clark and Josephine, who you can find as Clark underscore 34 and Scary Dog Friend on social media, respectively. This has been edited by me, Kestrel, who you can find as Hollow Compass. Our marketing strategist is Gwen, who you can find as Glitchy Pixie. And our character designs are by Ribby, who you can find as Art by Ribby. Our intro and outro song is Fiction Slash Reality by the band Hypno Sister. Thank you to Soren for permission to use the song. Our Kofi members are Akima, Amelia G, Gwendolyn, Christian J, Bunhan, Zombie Fighter 89, Antonio Nipples, Andrew Cluck, and Kenna Galas. Thank you all for your support. Our takes for this episode can be found on our Kofi. That's Kofi.com slash MonsterLoverPod. It might arrive a little later than usual if you're listening to this the day it was released. If you want to keep up to date with us, follow us on Twitter at MonsterLoverPod. Uh, and if you'd like to support the show, rate us on Spotify, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, or get a friend to listen. Anyway, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Okay, let's start. I thought that was a start. No. <laughs> I'm going to start the episode like that.